This is Casey Hendrickson on News Talk 95.3, Michiana's News Channel, your breaking news and weather station. Good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in. News Talk 95.3, Michiana's News Channel. I am your host, Casey Hendrickson. Phone number 574-2595-953. That is 2595-953. You can also send a text message to 45364. Please put MNC at the beginning of that message. I do want to thank our sponsor, Second Amendment Arms and Range. Once again, it doesn't matter what level shooter you are, they have a training program for you. If you're a new shooter or you want to learn to shoot, they have your basic pistol courses. And of course, if you're a more advanced shooter, they have more advanced tactical courses as well, both on and off site opportunities for you to train. Go to SecondAmendmentArms.net for more info. Mention me, get discounts on everything. Okay. Um, what do we have here? First of all, there's been a couple of stories that I wanted to talk about last week. I did not get an opportunity to, and it turns out it was good that they held off because now I can tie them to the stuff that happened in South Bend over the weekend. So Mayor Pete Buttigieg is finally back in town. Okay. He decided to come home. By the way, I have a story about him a little bit later on, probably in the five o'clock hour, uh, dealing with his campaign. There's been some developments with his campaign, that may or may not be very good for him. We'll talk about that later today. But first, uh, the mayor's back in South Bend. Okay, I know that a lot of people have been irritated, to say the least, that he hasn't been here nearly as much as they feel that he should have. Uh, of course, he didn't step down when he announced his run for president. I am told that that is because of internal Democratic rivalries and politicking, and that uh, it's the reason that he stayed here was to prevent other people from gaining power in the, uh, the state, the authorities that I get that information from um, are trustworthy, okay? But, uh, nonetheless, he's the mayor, he's not here all that much, and a lot of people feel like he's neglecting his duties as mayor. Well, he came home real quick when there was a fatal shooting involving the South Bend Police Department over the weekend. Now, this, of course, you know, obviously, obviously anytime something like this happens, it has to be addressed. So I would expect the mayor to come back, even if he wasn't running for president, but at the same time, He's running for president, uh, and you're running for president, and we have a black man who was killed, and naturally, we only care about police shootings if the suspect is, and I do say suspect, is not bystander, okay? It's intentional. There's a reason you say suspect. The suspect, uh, we only care if it's if it's a black black man. Uh, we, we rarely care if it's any other circumstance, in spite of the fact that it happens when you're talking about demographics, far greater with other demographics, okay? But the narrative, of course, is that police departments are out there hunting down young black men. In this case, it's not a young black man. It's a 53-year-old man, Eric Jack Logan of South Bend. He died at the hospital. Uh, the autopsy is being done today, by the way. So we'll have the official ruling on what caused his death, even though we already know. So go to 953MNC.com. Here's the story. A police officer fatally shot a black man in South Bend, Indiana, leading Mayor Pete Buttigieg to return home early from a presidential campaign trip to address the public and reach out to community members. The shooting happened early Sunday after somebody called the police to report a suspicious person going through cars. The St. Joseph County Prosecutor's Office uh, let all of this be known publicly. Of course, a police officer confronted a man in a vehicle at an apartment building parking lot. The man then got out of the vehicle, approached the officer with a knife raised, and then the officer opened fire. Also known as exactly what you're supposed to do if you're a police officer. Somebody comes at you with a knife, you, I mean, if you can retreat and do it peacefully, okay, that's fine. I'm not going to require you to do that. My Casey Hendrickson philosophy, personal philosophy, somebody's coming at you trying to kill you, you, you take them out, okay? Uh, if it can be done in a reasonable and safe fashion where you don't kill them, okay, that's your choice, but ultimately I'd rather that officer go home to his family than the suspect go home to theirs if the suspect is choosing to threaten the officer's life. Uh, so you have anybody coming at a police officer with a knife and the officer opens fire, I'm going to take the officer's side every, t every time. I mean, literally every single time, and I'm not going to blink about it. So the man, 53-year-old Eric Jack Logan of South Bend, died at the hospital. Again, they're doing the autopsy today. Mayor Buttigieg, who is part of a crowded field seeking the Democratic nomination to run for president next year, Cut short a campaign trip to New York to return to South Bend, where he will complete his second term as mayor this year. In a news conference late on Sunday, he said the circumstance of the shooting would be thoroughly investigated, and he called on anybody who may have witnessed the shooting to come forward and to speak to investigators. Now, you'll notice that he said speak to investigators, not hop onto YouTube and make a bunch of proclamations of things that are not true. All uh, hands up, don't shoot. 
I remember where uh, his friend actually went out there and said, they executed him, he surrendered, he got on his knees, and they shot him in the back of the head three times. They didn't. Ha- that didn't happen at all. His friend was totally lying and eventually got convicted and sentenced to prison. Uh, we will be striving to reach out to community members, said Buttigieg, whose campaign um, said that he canceled plans to speak with the Democratic National Community LGBTQ Gala in New York on Monday evening. Logan's wife, Shafonia Logan, told reporters after meeting with police with the police chief on Sunday night that she had many unanswered questions about what happened to her husband of 13 years. She said that her husband called her early Sunday asking her to pick him up as he was out with friends, but she was in bed and he replied that he would walk to his mother's house a few minutes away. I don't know what happened or what they say. He was breaking into a car, question mark, she said. Was that justified for him to shoot and kill kill him about breaking in a car? Yes! Okay? I'm so sick and tired of this crap. Yes! You, real, you realize her first justification for her doubt here is that he was just breaking into cars. Okay, first of all, he wasn't shot because he broke into cars. He was shot because the officer says he got out of a car with a flipping knife. Okay? You don't come after a police officer with a blade if you don't want to end up dead. It's that simple. You want to become Swiss cheese? Threaten a police officer. Easiest, fastest way for that to happen, except maybe pulling out a weapon inside of a locked jewelry store. They'll turn you into Swiss cheese, too. Okay? This is really simple. And I'm so sick and tired of this crap over and over and over again. Well, it wasn't justified in shooting him because he was just breaking into cars. First of all, don't break into cars. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Next thing is, he wasn't killed because he was breaking into a car. He was killed because somebody saw him breaking into a car, allegedly him, and then called the police, and when the police showed up, he pulled out a knife. Okay? You want to die, that's how you die. It's really that simple. If you don't want to die, don't threaten a police officer. Is this that hard? How long have the cops been around now? One or two years, right? We don't have this down yet. We've got an entire community in this country with a media complex behind it, pushing a false narrative that if you're a black man, cops will shoot you for nothing. So why give them additional reason to shoot you? Now, again, that's a myth. But if they all believe the myth, why play games? Buttigieg has had a sometimes tense relationship with the black community dating back to his first term in office when he fired the city's first black police chief, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it didn't help that the police chief that he brought in had a reputation of being not a friend to the black community back in Massachusetts. Okay, and I actually talked to the city council president uh, from there and he said, yeah, he, he's not well liked in the black community here. Uh, then they bring Teachman in here. What is one of the first things that Teachman did? He went to a black church in South Bend in shackles. Okay? So you fire a police chief who happens to be the first black police chief of the city. People liked him. Uh, you lied about why you fired him. You're forced to rehire him, but then you demote him so you can save face too. And then the next person you hire has a bad reputation for not being friendly to the black community and then does that? The shackle stunt? Yeah, there's going to be some problems, okay? Uh, He said Sunday. Now, keep in mind, previous police chief, not Ruskowski that we have now. Uh, He said Sunday that he has sometimes hesitant to speak publicly after police-involved shootings earlier in his time as mayor and that he heard from the black community that he needed to be more open and transparent. He said that he planned to meet Monday with faith and community leaders. Why? Okay, what do you need to meet with faith and community leaders for? Okay, I get it. You're running for president. This is politicking and everything else. The faith and community leader should be like, Mayor, go do your thing. He pulled a knife on a cop, dude. Like, we don't need to meet with you. Like, if this were controversial, okay, and if there were not reason to to shoot him, like, I don't know, maybe this case in Phoenix, which we'll talk about here in a couple of minutes, then you can come talk to us and try and figure out what happened. But ultimately, the guy's accused of pulling a knife. Now, if we find out that he didn't pull a knife... Okay, we can go ahead and revisit this this item. But right now, as the story stands, he got out of a car armed and he came at a police officer and he got shot. Why? Because you came at a police officer armed. What the hell do you expect to happen? This is not difficult. I mean, for crying out loud, how many, I've told the ice cream truck lady story a million times on this show. I'm going to tell it again. And the reason I'm going to tell it again is it's worth listening to because people need to hear it. I'm so tired of this. And I actually saw something on TV. There's that... First and last. Have you seen that first and last? I think it's on Netflix. It's your first day in jail and your last day in jail. 
and they're just following the uh, the people who are arrested. And, and I, man, I was just dying the other day when I heard this one story. Um, when I was watching this thing unfold, it's reality television. But anyway, we'll get to that here in just a couple of minutes. Of course, you can join us five seven four twenty five ninety five ninety five three, and you can send me a text message at four five three six four. Please put MNC at the beginning of that. You can watch the live stream by going to youtube.com dot slash Casey the host or twitch tv slash Casey the host. More coming up on ninety five three MNC. And good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in. News Talk 95.3, Michiana's news channel. 25 years ago today, O.J. Simpson took us on a little a little ride with his Bronco. 574-25-95-95-3. You can also send a text message to 45364. Please put MNC at the beginning of that message. A listener a couple of minutes ago said police cars, ambulance, fire truck at Edison Lakes Parkway and Main Street. This is literally at the corner here. Uh, one lane northbound looks like a pedestrian might be hurt, so uh, avoid that if you can. If you can go around, just use grape, and that would probably be your easiest uh, route around that. We're talking about the shooting in South Bend on, was it Saturday or Sunday? I think early Sunday, something like that, over the weekend. And man was killed. Now again, the, the official story as we know it at this point is the guy got out of a car with a knife, and the police officer killed him. And so now everybody is is running around, and uh, they're pitching a fit, and the the wife of 13 years of this man, uh, what's the quote? I want to actually read this quote. This is so stupid. This I Look, I know she's grieving, okay? I get it. And, and when you're with somebody for a long period of time, and you think you know them, and um, you know sometimes you, you do know them, and you still make excuses, but I'm just, you know, let's give her the benefit, benefit of the doubt, I guess. And like, how in the world... Could this guy go out there and do what they're accusing him of doing? It just doesn't make any sense, okay? And look, occasionally things like that happen, right? But she's out there. She's like, I don't know what happened or what they say. He was breaking into a car, question mark. Was that justified for him to shoot and kill him about breaking into a car? No, he didn't shoot him for breaking into a car. But what a silly thing. Oh, he was just doing a little crime. Um, So, you know, he shouldn't have been shot. That's not why he was shot. He was shot because he allegedly came at a police officer with a knife. And what do you expect the officer to do? Now, here's where all of the joking stuff happens, because on the live stream, somebody joked, I just shoot the knife, uh, which is a joke. Now, the reason for this, I've told the ice cream truck lady story many, many times. Henderson, Nevada. Now, Henderson and Las Vegas are like sister cities like South Bend and Mishawaka. You don't even really know where the boundary is. It's just they're, they're separate cities, but really everybody just considers it Las Vegas, right? Um, although people in Henderson will tend to get miffed these days if you call them Las Vegas. Uh, so anyway, Henderson Police Department responds uh, to a, a they pull a guy over, an ice cream truck pulls uh, pulls over as well, shows up at the scene later on. Lady gets out of the ice cream truck and comes at officers with a butcher knife, okay? Like, like one of those big, giant butcher knives. She's literally driving an ice cream truck. Uh, so they shoot her. And witnesses for months, okay, Dozens of witnesses. She was not armed. Nobody was in any danger. And so the Las Vegas Sun, which is a liberal paper in town, did everything they could to destroy the police officers, the police department, and everything. Whipped the whole community up into a frenzy, okay? Henderson Police Department is saying, we're not releasing any surveillance video until all of this is done, and we finish the investigation and all of that. So people are up in arms. There's a bunch of witnesses. I was right there. She didn't have a knife, nothing else. Of course, what happened when they released all the surveillance footage? Yeah, she had a knife. A really big honking knife, okay? All of those witnesses, including a news helicopter who was hovering above, said that she didn't have a knife, and it turns out she had a knife, and she darn near cut a bunch of officers. Isn't that that interesting? Huh? All of those months of people trying to destroy those police officers and people going, oh, you should have just shot her in the leg, or you should have shot her in the hand, or you don't need to shoot her at all. It's just a knife, and she's just a woman. All you have to do is wrestle her to the ground. She's not going to be able to stab or cut anybody. I mean, all of these these foolish idiots who think that they are they play video games and that's how real life is, or they watch Hollywood and they think that's how real life is, or anything of that nature. And it turns out she came this close to slicing some some uh, of the what's the the Achilles tendons of one of the officers and his partner shot her to death. Okay? Shot her. I mean she came that close to doing that. And obviously that's a serious injury in case you are unaware. They hold, they wrote like a whole uh, Greek thing about it and everything too. So <clears throat> I 
I know, I know, Joe. I know. I did it intentionally. Um, so it, it's just a, you know, it, when people see stuff like this, they just collectively freak out. So everybody's freaking out. The mayor comes back to town. If I were the mayor, I would have said, all right, I mean, is there anybody disputing that he came at the officer with a knife? And if, you know, the, the chief looks at him and goes, no, nobody's disputing that right now. Okay, mayor gives his speech. After his speech is done, then he comes home. He doesn't need to come home right away to, attr- to address a mythical narrative about a black guy being killed in South Bend because he drew a knife on a cop. Okay? Don't draw a knife on a cop. There was one, vi- there was one video in Las Vegas where I was at, because this came up a lot more in Las Vegas than it happens here. It's the only reason I'm bringing it up. Uh, there, was, there was a bunch of people who were super angry that police officers shot a man who was driving on the strip. And people were saying he was unarmed. And why did you have to shoot him? I, they shot him dozens of times. You know, why did you have to shoot him dozens of times if he was unarmed? Yeah, by unarmed, what they actually mean is he was driving and he ran into police officers and he had a police officer on the hood of his car when other officers shot him to death. Okay? On the hood of his car. He's not unarmed. He's got a 3,000-pound weapon is what he has on him. But we hear this all the time, especially when there's a vehicle being used against police officers. They were unarmed. No, they're not. First of all, doesn't matter if they were unarmed, okay? If you're going to go after an officer, they have a right to use lethal force. It's just that simple. If you're armed with something, whether that's a car, a knife, or what have you, they're definitely going to be using lethal force against you. Now, if some officers choose not to and they make it work and they get the person in custody, I believe they deserve some extra kudos. Don't get me wrong. I I applaud that all day long. But I'm not going to ask an officer to, to risk going home to their wife and kids or husband and kids if there's a chance that they can get seriously hurt. Take the safe route, do your job. Protect the public, protect yourself. That's all I care about. And for people to be as upset about this as they are is just laughable. Anyway, to the phone lines we go. Ben, welcome to the program. Good afternoon. Hey, Casey, let me turn my radio down first, okay? Sure thing. Okay, hey, hey okay, got it. All right, well, you took my first thunder away about the, the why didn't they shoot him in the hand or the arm or the leg? Or, yeah. Yeah, um, cause I, I do own a firearm, and I do know the the uh, fallacy about doing that, believe me. Sure. Uh, number two, I, I do pray and hope that the police were wearing the uh, the body cameras. And that way they can put these race baiters to bed once and for all, because I, I, I'm, li- I'm like you. Um, you know, the first, thing, the first thing you've got is you've got individuals who already don't even care what it is. As soon as they say black man, white cop, it's sure. automatic thought that this is going to go and, um, you know, go in that direction. Uh, as you know, if you don't know, I am African-American. But again, you know, like I said, I, I just truly, truly believe that many times, you know, the, the news media is just chomping at the bit for something like this to happen. I mean, when's the last time we've had one happen? So now, of course, you know, oh. Yeah, media, it's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. And mm. so, uh, and, oh, yeah, by the way, it's been a while. Uh, but, oh, yeah, but I thought the cops were kill, white cops were killing black black men all the time. Correct. Uh, but yeah, it's, been, it's been a while. Right. Um, so I, I'm sorry. You know, I've been, I, I tend to have a lead foot. I've been stopped a bunch of times by white cops and, Believe me, majority of times I did just give me a warning, um, but I'm not I'm not trying to justify that. I'm just saying I've never had one pull a gun on me for any particular reason whatsoever. So well, you know, and uh, I've watched the YouTube videos for many many years, driving while black, and you know the I, the idea behind these videos, for those of you who don't know, is that you get pulled over simply because of the color of your skin, and they do these traffic stops, and of course they have their dash cam rolling. And in the vast majority of them, first of all, the cops are very polite. They, they, there's nothing there. There's a legitimate complaint. You know, your tail lights out or your tags are expired or whatever. And the only time I've ever seen a police officer, I, I shouldn't say the only time, but in the majority of the time where they have these videos where they tag this and the officer loses their cool, it's when the person automatically is defensive and rude to the officer. And at that point, the officer has to wonder what's going on. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it, there's a different instinct that kicks in. And, you know, look, every time I get pulled up, my hands are on the steering wheel. They're at 10 and 2, okay, until they, they knock on my window. They don't have to worry about my hands, where they are, what I'm fumbling for, or anything like that. And if you're polite and respectful, they tend to be polite and respectful, too. Now, occasionally, you'll get one having a bad day. Uh, it happens. Yeah. But, you know, that's just been my experience. Like I said, I've been harassed by, by police officers, too, in the past. But uh, generally speaking, they're all very friendly and professional. I can't tell you the number of times that I've been told by police officers that when they're walking up to the car, many times, not all the times, but many times, they are they are determining whether to write a ticket or not 
dependent upon how they're reacting yeah. when they put the car. Yeah. And he, that may not be, you know, he may, may not be correct, but he said that I've had a number of them tell me this. He said, I will, it, it depends on what, what your reaction is going to be. Um, Casey, real fast, I can yep. tell you, 1977, I was a young black man back then mm-hmm. with Afro, and I just joined the service in the delayed entry program, mm-hmm. and I got stopped in, of all places, Lynchburg, Virginia, and I was doing 70 in a 55, when the speed limit was 55 miles an hour. Okay. And, that, and it was the state police, Virginia, came up to me, he says, you know, you were speeding? I said, yeah, I was. He says, and then he happened to see a Navy stick on the back of the car. He says, are, are you in the service? I said, no, I just joined the service. He said, well, uh, I just want to tell you, you need to slow it down, uh, have, a good, have a nice day. Yeah. I mean... Come on, we're we're talking about in the seventies now. So, right. Okay. So. I, I hear you. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. <laughs> hey Ben, I got a roll, man. It's always good to talk to you though, but thank you so much. All right. All right take bye-bye. care. And and like I said, you know, if if we get evidence that this didn't go down the way that we that we are told it went down, we'll revisit this, okay? But but right now there's no reason to be outraged at the conduct of police and there's no reason to be behaving um, like there is some huge conspiracy or something like that, because right now the shooting appears to be completely and totally justified. So and until further information comes forward, if at all, everybody needs to collectively calm down. We're not done with this, OK, because there's other stuff that has to be said about it. And I'll tie this in with a couple of other cases that are happening around the country right now as well. We've got more coming up. News Talk 95.3, Michiana's News Channel. And good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in. News Talk 95.3, Michiana's News Channel. I am your host, Casey Hendrickson. Phone number 574-2595-953. Do want to thank our sponsor, Second Amendment Arms and Range. Again, located in New Carlisle, 10 dedicated shooting lanes with rifle and pistol. Of course, they have the leagues every week. Uh, co-ed leagues, too, by the way. People really love hanging out over there. Go to secondamendmentarms.net for more information. Get half off your range time. 10% off in the store and listener exclusive discounts on firearms just by mentioning me against second amendment arms.net uh, listener had sent me a message and said, will Capitol Avenue be open on Friday? That is a great question. So they're, they're redoing the new beams. So they're doing those beams over there and this is Capitol Avenue over the St. Joseph river. So it closed starting today. They are hoping to be done with the beams Thursday and that it will reopen Friday, but it will be one lane of traffic in each direction, so it's still going to be slow. So that's, again, it's expected to be finished on Thursday to reopen one lane of traffic in either direction by Friday, but there might be delays to that, so just uh, keep checking on that, okay? All right. Um, Let's see. What do we have here? Uh, Let's see. Casey, he broke the window of the car, took a backpack out of the car. His wife was not there, but there were Many witnesses that saw the knife. Like I said, I mean, right now, you know, this is the thing. Right now, there is, there's, there's no credible challenge to the officer's story. So why are we getting up in arms about this as if some horrendous police shooting has happened? So I'm watching this first and last the other day. Now, first and last, I believe it's on Netflix. I don't know if it's on regular television. And it's the first day in jail after you get arrested and your last day. In jail, so basically they capture you on your first day, and then uh, they're they're you know they they follow you through your last day while you're there. Most of these are people pre-trial and that sort of thing, and they're there for a week or so or whatever. And in one of the cases, right? In one of the cases, the guy is arrested for I believe armed robbery and solicitation of prostitution. Okay, so his story to the camera is, I you know I met these I was at the strip club I met these strippers and. You know, we went to a hotel room and things like that, and then we we did our thing. And then they said that I owed him 200 bucks, and I, I was like, I'm not paying you $200. I didn't think that this was a prostitution thing, right? Uh-huh. Uh, and, and he goes, next thing I know, the police are coming through the door with shields and everything else, and they uh, they arrest me, they find my gun, I have a concealed carry permit, and all of this other stuff, right? And nothing about the guy's story sounded plausible i mean nothing sounded plausible about it <clears throat> i mean the police coming in kicking in the door with uh, with shields and things like that because a couple of hookers called over 200 dollars just doesn't make any sense so anyway later on in the show he finally gets a hold of his girlfriend and he tells his girlfriend what's going on now here's what he tells his girlfriend right he tells his girlfriend that he's in the hotel room alone okay that there weren't two prostitutes in there uh she asks him if he had a gun he goes no i didn't have a gun 
They didn't have any kind of gun. And so he's like, I don't know what they did. They just they just kicked. I don't know why they came after me. They kicked in the door and they took me into custody. So this this woman on the other end, because you can hear her her part of the call too. She goes, well, you know, this country, they'll say they'll say anything to get us. This country is not about us, meaning this country is not about black people. OK, now she is sitting here formulating a narrative on how the police randomly kicked in this guy's hotel room and drug him off to jail and charged him with all of these crimes, okay? And he's lying to her. He's lying to her about the prostitutes not being in the room, about him not having a gun and all of this other stuff. He's totally fabricating the entire story. But she's now weaved a narrative that because America is racist, this is plausible that that what he's saying is true. It was total garbage. And I'm sitting here, I'm laughing. He's literally lying to this woman about everything that happened, and she has concocted a scenario that the police are so racist that this is probably true. It's it's unbelievable. Like I guess he didn't think that she would eventually watch the show. By the way, the update on the show is that he's not back with her. Uh, <laughs> but but this, there's a mentality out there of people who just see this stuff out there, and they automatically assume that people are coming for them, or they're gunning for them, or something. It's ridiculous. Okay, like I said, if you don't want to get killed, don't draw a knife on a police officer. It really is that simple. Okay, I don't care what this this guy's wife thinks or whatever. And she's running around and going, he's breaking into cars that really justify shooting him. That's not why he was shot, lady. It's that simple. That's not why he was shot. And unless any information comes forward, which which refutes the police's official story, which right now doesn't appear to be happening because it would have happened already. Uh, this is going to be a justified shooting all day long. And the officer did his job. And your husband screwed up. Now, I don't know why he screwed up. I don't know if it was out of character for him. I don't know if he was on something. We'll find out with the autopsy when it's done today. I don't know. But at this point in time, the, what the officer did was his job. It's that simple. Now, there is another man who was killed. Now, this was in Mississippi, and this has caused riots, okay? And dozens of police officers have been hurt in the riots in this Mississippi killing. And we'll tell you about that story coming up on 95.3 MNC. And good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in. News Talk 95.3, Michiana's news channel. Our next Pass the Mic event with yours truly is set for this Saturday, 12 noon, or excuse me, Friday, not Saturday, good good Lord, sorry, talking about multiple events during the live stream. Uh, this Friday, 12 noon at Monterey Mexican Bar and Grill, a lot of you have been sending me messages and saying, dude, when is the next Pass the Mic? It's Friday. All right, so there you go. Uh, sorry about the delay in letting you know about it. Uh, people have been on vacation. And so we uh, we had to make sure that we had all of our ducks in a row. So this Friday at noon, Monterey Mexican Bar and Grill. Of course, we'll be covering the hottest topics. We got the border, 2020 campaign, um, Mueller report stuff. Is there still things coming up about that? Tariffs and more. Again, specially priced 95.3 MNC menu will be enjoyable as well. Pass the mic with yours truly at 12 noon this Friday at Monterey Mexican Bar and Grill from 95.3 MNC. Uh, please remember. 21 and over only because we are in the bar area and you can't, <clears throat> unfortunately, you just, you can't, uh, can't get around that and apologize. I know that many of you want to be able to bring your, your younglings and all of that. They look one day when they get the upstairs taken care of, we may be able to do that. Okay. But we're in the bar. We can't have the kids in there. Sorry. It's Indiana law. All right. Five, seven, four, 25, 95, 95, three. So there has been another shooting. This happened in Mississippi. So there was a black man who was killed in a shootout. A shootout. A shootout with federal police in Memphis. He was wanted for armed robbery and attempted murder. Okay. Brandon Weber, 20 years old, was killed in a shootout with federal agents last Wednesday. He was suspected of shooting a Mississippi man on June 3rd, then stealing the victim's car in Mississippi, according to Reuters. He responded, uh, Weber responded to a Facebook ad put out by the victim to sell his car. The two then went for a test drive of the vehicle on Monday, June 3rd. As the victim stepped out of the car, Weber reportedly shot him five times before driving away. The victim is still alive in the hospital. Um, so hopefully they pull through. 
A second suspect in the man shooting is still being sought after, sought after by authorities, according to Reuters again. The Federal Fugitive Task Force was seeking Weber in Memphis on multiple arrest warrants related to his alleged involvement in the shooting. Weber reportedly crashed his vehicle into police cars on Wednesday night. He actually rammed police cars, starting an altercation that would result in his death. So his death, okay, okay, this guy, multiple criminal acts, shot somebody, stole their car, rammed into police officers, got in a shootout with cops, dies. People are rioting because it's unjustified. Rioting. Literally tearing the city of Memphis apart. Okay? This is ridiculous. 36 police officers were injured in all of this. 36 officers were injured. Okay? And so people are now engaging in anti-police riots across Memphis last week. Uh, Several police cars were vandalized during the rioting, and the windows of a fire station were shattered, according to the mayor. Rioters reportedly threw rocks and bricks at police, prompting the use of tear gas by police to break up the crowds. They're rioting because they think it was unjustified to shoot somebody who had shot somebody, stole their car, and rammed into police officers with said car. And they're out there rioting over this. What in the hell? What is wrong with people? So they're out there telling everyone, oh, this is unjustified. The police are, are abusing us. What? When you get to the point, you know, we had obviously, you know, a year or two where this was real bad. Where people are saying, doesn't matter what people do, if they are of a certain skin color, they should not be dealt with appropriately by law enforcement. It doesn't matter what skin color the law enforcement officer is because there's a couple of times we have black and and latino officers involved nobody cared okay uh then it became simply that they were they were also racist which makes no sense um didn't you remember that uh that activist she was out i think it was black lives matter activist don't quote me on that though And, and she said that you can't once you become a police officer you're no longer a black person but now you're blue remember that so it's just they have twisted this stuff all over the place. So we've got this guy in South Bend who pulled a knife, was allegedly robbing cars, pulled a knife on a police officer, gets shot, okay? He unfortunately dies, but that's his fault. Uh, You've got this guy who engaged in a shootout with police officers, and the whole city is rioting in Memphis, Tennessee, because they think that the police were unjust in killing somebody who had tried to murder somebody else while they were stealing their car and then tried to injure or kill several police officers by ramming into their vehicles. This is the state of what we're in with some people. They just will not stop and collectively look at all of this. Maybe it's because it gets worse at election time. I don't know. And it probably gets ramped up simply because of of politicking and all of that other stuff. Like I said, the mayor never should have come back to the city of South Bend to deal with this. Never should have. Doesn't need to meet with community leaders and the likes of that uh, this week. Doesn't need to. The guy pulled a knife on a cop. He pulled a knife on a cop. Don't do that. Okay, if if you give your kids any advice, okay, you can be the worst parent in the world. You give your kids any advice at all. Yo, don't do anything that'll make the cop think that you're a threat. How about that? Just simple little things. Don't do anything that would make them justify drawing their weapon and shooting you. That's it. It really is that simple, ladies and gentlemen. I've got a lot to get through today. Way behind already. Uh, there's this Phoenix story too with police officers where the police may have overreacted, but I haven't even got a chance to got to that or get to that. More coming up.